don't know if you're ready for the Holy Grail. It's been found. Located. Oh! I didn't realize it was so shiny. I thought it was gold, but it's just silver. The M8 Holy Grail. <laughs> Just let the clutch out, that was it. Guys, the full performance bagger. That's what you've been waiting for. 143 cubic inch street motor. We took the compression down a little bit, put a little bit smaller cam in it so it's got torque right off the hit. It is gonna sacrifice horsepower on the top end, but to have the torque right where you need it, have a little lower compression motor to ride it on the street is kind of what we were going for on this build. So, really, really cool stuff. We're gonna dive right into the motor. Down here, from this guy right here to the black part here, that is your cylinder jug. If you check this guy out, it is completely CNC'd. It's a four and a half inch bore with a four and a half inch stroke. It is 143 cubic inches of a beast M8. Something we don't do on builds often is polish the heads. On this build, we were able to have the customer let us do what we wanted. Super cool customer. It's the second bike he's built with us. It's uh, Chris Lazama's bike. And if you notice, these are brand new, plus 2.5 millimeter over MHP heads done by Frankenstein Engine Dynamics. They're awesome. If you look in here, Andy, check out that intake. It's polished as well. You can't see it, but because we were polishing the heads, might as well polish the intake manifold. Four and a half inch stroke, four and a half inch bore, 143 cubic inches. It has our Moonshine 588 camshaft in it. s, &S oil pump and plate. We have a pair of fueling race lifters in here. They are the short travels in this build. We don't always use the short travels, but on this guy we did. Adjustable push rods, which are actually the MHP adjustable push rods in this motor. And a pair of CP Carrillo pistons. So, 165 horsepower, 157 foot-pounds of torque. We'll show the Dynagraph. Check it out, guys, look at this thing. Pulls right from the start all the way through. Torque just continuously grows, and it is 140 foot-pounds of torque past 6,000 RPMs. You normally don't see that. The cubic inch makes all the difference, so monster. Battle Cruise tires, brand new from Bridgestones on this guy. They are a great compound for handle everything you throw at it. Wet, performance turning, great tire. We like and we run them on a lot of our builds. BST, 19 inch wheel in the front. This one is different than the ones we usually run because it is matte, matte finish. Thank you. Love you too. <laughs> this wheel's a little different because it's matte finish and uh, it's a 19 inch BST. We stay with the stock sizes, we don't change them up. Um, they turn the best, they handle great, no reason to really go into that unless you're actually bringing your bike to the track. The rotors we run, they are full floating rotors on the front. The only difference here is when you hit the brakes, the contact point is here instead of on your button. It is a lot better setup than some of the other guys on the market. We've talked about that in depth in the last two videos. Got Behringer radial mounted calipers on this bike. These guys right here, we got a custom pair coming. Um, they're gonna be milled out to the exact millimeters we wanted. We typically run 24 millimeters from here to here. They are being cut by Kraus Moto just for us. It is a 320 millimeter setup, so the rotor's 320 millimeters. And we're running a factory fender on an Olin's inverted Kraus Moto setup. So you have an Olin's inverted fork. This one is three quarters of an inch taller than stock. There's different setups they do. That setup works great with a 13 inch rear shock. So it is a three quarter of an inch longer front fork than factory. We got the Harley lower spoiler kit. They're awesome. They look great. It just completes that front end look. Covers some stuff. It directs a lot of air right towards the motor. You got a 10 inch pullback riser setup from Kraus and the fly moto bars are roughly two, two and a half inches, which gives you a total of 12 to 12 and a half inch complete rise on the handlebar setup. And this one allows us to put the gauge relocation 
in between your riser and your navigation where you can see both. Um, I lose a touch of the bottom of my gauges, but I can still see my screen really well. I lose maybe 10% of the bottom of the screen. We've gone over that in a couple of videos. Check this one out, it's right here. It'll have the difference of the handlebars and why we do them. There's so many different configurations. That's why we really enjoy this setup from Krauss. And then the polyurethane bushings are not here into your top triple tree. Your polyurethane mounts are moved to be right here below your bar. So it's just like factory, they're underneath the bar. Of course, custom lines just to tie everything in. Once again, we're running a pair of PM made grips. RSD, sister company to performance machine. It is the narrower grip. We've talked about the narrow grip before. The narrow grip allows you to have a better feeling when you have gloves on. If you have a fatter grip and then you put the gloves on, it's thicker. And if you ride a lot, you'll notice it'll pinch you here in the web of your thumb. All right. Having a narrower grip when you're riding with gloves will reduce that amount of pinching you have in the glove. Um, I've noticed on longer rides, on thicker grips, I've actually had to take my gloves off and ride. I was good. On the narrower grip, you really don't have to do that. It's a little bit easier. More room for your fingers here too. It's just a good feel. We got some blue custom accents. Um, we just wanted to change it up from the black and the silver. We have a, some Olean's remote reservoirs. On the rear here, we stayed with the extended bags that come on a Road Glide Special, but we did take off the factory fender and we mounted a CVO rear fender on the rear of the bike. So it is a kit available through the Harley catalog, which is a CVO rear fender kit. The only difference is, is on the lights, these are a pair of Custom Dynamics um, run turn stops in place of the Harley Davidson light setup. And then we modified our own setup for the license plate. We have lights built in here. It's a little cleaner setup. It's a lay down plate. We had the paint match to the bike. And of course, you got your Thunder header sticking out this side. Now, eventually, this bike might get some standard bags, but for the time being, we're rocking the bags that came on her, the extended bags. Now, we did want to ride it today and show some more clips, but it's raining. And 150 foot pounds of torque plus in the rain, probably not the best idea. So, we get phone calls from other guys trying to dial their suspension in. The best way to start is with your preload. These guys on both forks to your preload. If you turn this one one turn, you want to turn that one one turn. You want those guys to match. But how you set it up is you get off the bike. I like to do it in a stand. It's real easy. I kind of find home with it. Then we take our slider, which is on this side. Check this out, Randy. We take our slider, we move it up, all right? Then we get on the bike. And we get off the bike. Now we're gonna see how much the slider moved. And that is gonna be your preload setting. So right here, that's how much preload is on the bike right now. You're gonna dial that guy in between 20 and 25 millimeters, um, depending on what you're going for. You know, if you want a little stiffer setup, you're gonna be more close to the 20. If you want a, bit, a little bit looser setup, a little more comfort, 25, but we usually start them right at 20 mil, and then we go into the compression and rebound from there. But that's the first step. The next one would be your compression. You know, turning your compression up is gonna make it ride more stiff, it's gonna be more sporty. Turning your compression counterclockwise is going to be a more, um, finesse feel, it's gonna be your more compliant feel. It's gonna have more um, bump suppression and everything. It's not as aggressive. And then your rebound too, you're gonna to dial your rebound in. Your rebound is gonna be the fine tuning coming in and out of the corner or what it does after you hit the bump. To adjust your compression on this fork, it's your left side. It is gonna be your Allen in the middle of this guy. Right, stiffer, left more compliant, less stiff. Same thing on your rebound. Quicker rebound, slower rebound. That's how you're dialing these forks in. Lots of tuning, very nice feel. The one bad thing about getting an inverted fork is once you have one, you're always gonna want one, be careful. Really, really cool setup. It is nice. We have named this bike the Silverback. We always name our big builds. We have the four shot, 
This one we just finished, we're waiting on a custom name badge right for the tank console and a lid that is in route, but this is going to be the silver back. I wish it was my bike. It was tuned by MVO, Michael Van Orden. He's over there hiding, stealing people's french fries. I think, did we get him? Did we get him in his element in the dyno? Was he feeling it? All right, I didn't see it, hopefully it was good. Where we're going, we don't need roads. Do you have ear protection? <laughs> If you're looking for a build or would like to get in contact with us, the easiest way to do it is to go to our website. Type in moonshineharley.com. Once again, moonshineharley.com. Go to our homepage. On the homepage, there's tabs at the top of the screen. The one in the middle says Performance Shop. When you highlight Performance Shop, a drop down will pop up. Click on the Moonshine Horsepower button. Basically, what we need to know is how to contact you. You need to fill out your name your phone number, and then the bike. The more info you put on here, the more prepared we are when we call you. Your current engine, current parts on the bike, because we want to know what we can continue to use in the build you're looking for, or if you need everything. Um, what parts are going to be friendly to the build you're looking for. And then building goals, what are you looking for? What do you want us to accomplish with your bike? Put it in there. Also put the time frame. First available, you're three, four months out. Let us know how quickly you would like us to get to your build and then hit that submit button, someone from our horsepower team will call you back. So it'll either be Aaron, Nick, myself, Jamie, or maybe MVO, Michael Van Orden. One of us four will call you back. Our schedule is Tuesday through Saturday. All the horsepower guys, Tuesday through Saturday. The shop is open seven days a week. And typically when you fill one of these out, it can be anywhere from 30 minutes to 48 hours to get back in contact with you, but we will. We appreciate the support. Please, if you haven't already, go to the subscribe button, click that guy. Also, you might want to click on the bell for notifications. Let's you know when we have a live event coming up on YouTube. Also lets you know when we're about to drop a brand new video. We appreciate you guys watching. Thanks for all the support. Have a good one. All the performance, 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 all, all, all. Performance, all of it. Baggers, baggers, fast baggers, fast baggers. Slow baggers suck, suck, suck.